Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper. God bless all of you that are watching this video today. I want to just thank God for all of you right now. You know, that last video I um, spoke on called The Last Days. This is a wake-up call for the believer. I'm only preaching to the believers this morning. But um, I want to read something to the believers this morning out of 2 Peter. And you know, we, we, we get so used to going to um, church services and listening to the preacher preaching. It's a good sermon. I'm going to tell you, all those sermons are good. They're good. They are a blessing. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong when I said that, you know, that something's not being preached. What I'm saying is that if you look at the signs of the times, it will tell you that Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Amen. And being that Jesus is coming soon, one thing our precious Savior wanted us all to understand is that we need to get ready. Amen? So follow along with me. I'm going to be reading out of the NLT translation. That's right. The um, written in the New Living Translation. Okay? Some of you are used to reading out of the King James Bible because a lot of you folks are probably from England and you can you speak that language but I want to speak to those born in the United States today okay and those that um, understand the language that I'm speaking that's why I have a Bible in the same language that you can understand amen so we're going to read out of second Peter starting at the first verse and this is Simon Peter speaking, okay? I'm just going to read because a lot of this is self-explanatory. But Peter is about to let everyone know uh, that the day of the Lord is coming, that judgment day is coming. Now, over 2,000 years ago, this apostle, this follower of Christ, is letting the believers know that judgment is coming, that the day of the Lord is coming. Amen. And if they was letting everyone know then, you need to understand that we need to continue letting people know that that day is coming. And one thing about that day, Jesus says, no one knows the day or the hour which it will happen. Amen. So this is 2 Peter, starting at chapter 1, the very first verse. I want you guys just to follow along with me. Get your Bibles. Watch this. This is a letter from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. The faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Growing in faith, I'm at verse 3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. You have to know him. Amen. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. There are promises that Jesus has given us in order for us to share in his divine nature. Amen. And escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond, to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with the generous provision of moral 
excellence. That's how you respond to Jesus Christ's promises, to God's promises. You have to supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patience, endurance. And patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who, fall, who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Look around. We are living, especially in this country called the United States. It is very immoral. There is no moral excellence, but there is a lot of immoral and dysfunction going on in this country. Can I get a witness? All right, let's, let's just move on. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you would be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted, blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Look at that. Look at that. Did you hear that? If you do this, you will never fall away. Why are we falling away from the truth? Because we're not doing what was just read. Remember these scriptures. Take the time and read them for yourself. Second Peter, starting at the very first chapter, the first verse. I'm going to keep going. Amen. Amen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you are wondering, am I going to make it? Am I going to make it in? Am I going to make it there? This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. First, you got to be reborn again. You have to repent. You have to renounce all those things that you used to believe that it was okay. It was okay to smoke weed. It was okay to smoke blunts. It was okay to smoke wax. It was okay to commit adultery. It's okay to have side chicks. It's okay to pimp. It's okay to sell drugs. It's okay to steal. It's okay not to work. It's okay to sell pills. You have to renounce all of that. Tell God to deliver you from all of that, that Lord, I renounce all of that. I no longer agree to those things that I believe in. I believe in the unadulterated truth, which is the word of God. Amen. That's something you need to do. Okay. The next thing you need to do, you need to pay attention to scripture. You don't need somebody preaching to you. You need to read the word and pay attention to the scripture. And understand it. You're old enough to comprehend. Amen. Watch this. And if you don't, if you can't, if for some reason you can't read that well, get you somebody that you can trust that will read and comprehend this to you. You can even listen to me. I'm not going to lead you wrong because I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell for telling you something wrong. All right. Pay attention to the scripture. Verse 12, 2 Peter chapter 1, now we're at verse 12. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. Now, Peter is talking to people who already know these things. Have you noticed you can't even remind people and go over the word because they say, I already know that. I don't need to hear it. 
I know the Bible. I don't need you telling me anything. But Jesus says that you are a good minister. You are a good servant if you remind. If you remind people of these things. And you got people that don't want to hear it because they think that they know more. They don't want to hear it. Oh, I know the Bible. I can quote the Bible back and forth. I don't need to hear it. But you ain't living right. Let's go on. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth. You have been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. Hmm? Has God shown you that you must soon leave this earthly life? Huh? Has he shown you? Yeah, he's shown you. He has shown all of us. So I will work hard. I will work hard. I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I am gone. That's why we do this. That's why we do this for you Mr. and Mrs. Know-it-alls. That's why we do this. For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. When he received honor and glory from God the Father, the voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. When ourselves heard that voice from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. That's right. The mountain of the transfiguration. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. The Old Testament, don't throw it away just because you got a New Testament. Because the prophets in the Old Testament prophesied. They predicted, they told you about the coming of Jesus and what he would do, and how he would suffer, and that he would be resurrected. All that in the Old Testament. And then we get to the New Testament, starting at the book of Matthew. And everything that the prophets said came to pass. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns, and Christ, the morning star, shines. In your hearts, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. No. Or from human initiative. No, it did not. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit. And they spoke from the Almighty God. Second Peter chapter 2. Now we're going to talk about false teachers. But they were also, but there were also false prophets in Israel. Uh-huh. There are false prophets in Israel. We got false prophets today. Uh-huh. That's why you got two different messages coming at you, and you don't know which one to believe. I'm telling you which one to believe. You just heard it read. Uh-huh. But there are also false, false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. Just as they there are will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. 
There are people talking about they are uh, the black Hebrew Israelites. There are people that are going to tell you that his name is Yeshua and Yah. Yes, that's true. That is true. There's nothing wrong with that, but they want you to stop believing what you've been taught by the Almighty God. What you have heard from the prophets of old. Let me tell you something. Being a black Hebrew um, Israelite don't get you into heaven. It don't. If you read the word, a lot of God's people were destroyed. And they were destroyed because of unbelief, because of sexual immorality, because of lying, because of wickedness, and because of evilness. Nobody was thrown into hell because of their race. Oh my God. I don't want to start preaching. I just want to read this to you, okay? You got to watch these false teachers because they were cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them, who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Amen. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of the truth will be slandered. Now, I'm not jumping on the Hebrew Israelites. You hear me? I'm just saying, come on. Go ahead and be Hebrew Israelite. But don't deny Jesus Christ because somebody painted a picture of him as a white man. If you got any knowledge and you know where Jesus came from, why would you even believe that? Don't matter. You don't have to believe lies. But if you don't have to throw away the word of God because somebody showed you a picture of a white man and called him Jesus. So you run and you want to be Muslim and you want to say God is black like that's going to get you into heaven. Like that's going to get you a pat on the back and make you um, God's favorite. No, it's not. It's the word. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of wickedness. That's what my word tells me. Ah, many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. I'm not just getting on black heads. Um, Israelites. You got false teachers out there, all in the Mormon church, Jim Jones, all of these people talking about UFOs and this is their this is Jesus, this is their God. You got all kind of stuff. They're false. And a whole lot of people are following them because they hate the truth. Nobody mm -mm. and they hate those that follow Christ. Because of the truth. Mm -hmm. Listen. Freedom is being able to have a choice. God gave us all freedom. And you have a choice. He gave Adam and Eve all freedom. He gave them freedom to have a choice. you either going to believe, trust, and listen to the almighty God. Or you're going to believe and trust something else. And they chose to believe and trust something else that was being told to them. And that's how sin came right on in. And we are still believing something else. But today, you're not going to believe nothing but this today, believers. Okay? You can still go to your church and get, and, 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 and get your therapeutic sermon that's going to help you cope with life on a day-to-day -day basis. There's nothing wrong with that, but I have to give you the truth. Amen? Amen. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of the truth will be slandered. Mm -hmm. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. Come on, somebody. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction would not be delayed. Uh-huh. You went to church. You gave all your money. They use some clever lie to tell you that you are robbing God if you don't give to them. 
Listen, if we're not sacrificing bulls on the altar anymore, we're not, God is not getting your offering. I don't care what you think. He's not getting your offering when you give it to that man. He's not getting it. Because how many of these men have been found out to be wicked and evil drug traffickers? You didn't gave all your money to this man. Talking, he made, fooled you to believe that you're giving it to God. If you study your word, God says, if you give to the poor, you give to me. If you give to the poor, you give to me. Stick on that scripture. Stand on that scripture. I don't care what all these pastors are saying. No, if we're not sacrificing bulls anymore, because when we used to bring our offering to the Lord, he would get it. They would burn it up. And he would inhale it. It ain't being burnt up now. It's going to that man and his wife's pocket. And they buying jets, boats, and everything with it. Oh, don't get me started. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago, and their destruction would not be delayed. For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. See? God didn't even spare the angels <coughs> that disrespected him and disobeyed him and did wrong in his sight. Mm-mm. He threw them into hell in gloomy pits of darkness where, there are, where they are being held until the day of judgment. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. Did you know that? You heard about Noah, God telling Noah to build the ark because he's going to destroy the world. But did you know that Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment? And you know what? They didn't even help Noah build the ark of safety. They kept on getting high. They kept on stripping. They kept on twerking. They kept on lying. They kept on stealing. They kept on killing. They kept on carjacking. They kept on doing all of that. They kept on partying and turning it up. They kept on having family reunions. They kept on doing everything business as usual as what's going on in the earth today. In this present day, they kept right on doing that. And then you got Noah's of today telling people to get ready. Ain't nobody paying it no mind. I'm going to tell you why. Watch this. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. Later, God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of living in this mess around me. Sick of living in it. You got men marrying men. You got women marrying women. I don't care if you my relative. I got to tell you the truth. This is immoral. This is sick. You got grown men impregnating fifth grade little girls. Look at your news. Fifth grade. And she has impregnates her at 11. They got a relationship. He's 24. And she's 11. And they are happy. And when he went to the hospital, he was all happy. She's going to give birth. She's now 12. She's going to give birth to a precious little girl. And the doctors asked her, how old are you? 
She said, I'm 12. And they wanted to know, where's your parents at? How did this happen? Where's the, and this is the father? They called the police. He up there with pink balloons and everything, and the cops got him. This is the kind of world we live in. It, that's not just one incident. Man, I can't count. We got thousands, thousands of 9, 10, 11, and 12-year-old girls having sex with 30 and 40-year and 50-year-old men and getting pregnant. In 20 years, all it took was 20 years to destroy and kill 72 babies, boys and girls in this country, 72 million of them in 20 years by abortion. 20 years. You killed 72 million babies, male and female, through abortion. And we think that's okay. We just keep going and doing. But God is looking at this mess like he looked at Solomon Gomorrah. Women turning themselves into men, men turning themselves into women. Teenagers have no respect for the elderly. Put a gun to your head and blow your brains out. To rob you. This is the kind of world we live in. I thank God he's coming. Because if we can't stop this mess, if this mess can't stop, we got a savior that's going to stop this mess. He's going to stop this mess. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. I'm tormented in my soul behind this. Some people think it's okay. It's not none of my business. They're not doing anything to me. You love who you love. Oh, my God. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desires. You hear that? He's especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desires and who despise authority. See, this is why I get an NLT. See, you, you, you get a King James Version, you, you come forth at thou Robin Hood, it, um, these and thou. you can't even understand that. That Bible, that book written in that language that you cannot speak will send your butt straight to hell. You're missing it. You're missing the mark. You don't have enough common sense to say, this is not my language. Let me get a Bible that is written in the language that I speak and understand. You can get you an NIV, the New International Version. Mm -hmm. You leave that King James Bible to those in Britain and England. They, that's their language. That's their language. Yeah. Watch this. He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire and who despise authority. These people are proud and arrogant, daring even to scoff at supernatural beings without so much as trembling. But the angels who are far greater in power and strength do not dare to bring from the Lord a charge of blasphemy against those supernatural beings. These false teachers are like unthinking animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed. They scoff at things they do not understand, and like animals, they would be destroyed. Their destruction is their reward for the harm they have done. They love to indulge in evil pleasures in broad daylight. They are a disgrace and a strain among you. Mm-hmm. They delight in deception, even as they eat with you in your fellowship meals. They commit adultery with their eyes, and their desire for sin is never satisfied. They lure unstable people into sin, and they are well trained in greed. They live under God's curse. They have wandered off the right road and followed the footsteps of Balaam, son of Beor 
who love to earn money by doing wrong. Look at that. Them the drug dealers, them the prostitutes. They love them the hit men and hit women. Them, they love to earn money by doing wrong. RuPaul's drag race. But Balaam was stopped from his mad course when his donkey rebuked him with a human voice. That's right. Read your Bible and you'll know what, what this story is about. Get your Bible and read it. I'm talking to believers this morning. Hallelujah. These people are as useless as dried up springs or a mist blown away by the wind. They are doomed to black to blackest darkness. They brag about themselves with empty, foolish boasting, with an appeal to twist to twisted sexual desires. They lure back into sin those who have barely escaped from a lifestyle of deception. They promise freedom but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. Uh-huh. We got meth slaves. Meth controls a lot of people. So does marijuana. They can't live without it. They got to wake up to a blunt, go to bed to a blunt, do everything behind a blunt. Don't get it. And wax. And heroin. And fetty that they call fentanyl. Mm-hmm. And lower tabs, pills. Mm-hmm. And codeine. Yeah, all of that. You're a slave to it. Porn. Watching porno. Pornographic stuff. You're a slave to it. Mm-mm. Watch this. Who? They. Wait a minute, where am I? But they themselves are slaves to sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. You hear that? It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command they were given to live a holy life. That is called blasphemy. And with that is no forgiveness. They prove the truth of this proverb. A dog returns to its vomit. And another says, a washed pig returns to the mud. This is the last chapter, chapter three. The day of the Lord is coming because of all that I read out. Simon Peter is saying this. And Simon Peter is going to give, he's going to give um, praise to the Apostle Paul as well. He's going to give him a pat on the back. The day of the Lord is coming. This is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commands through your prophets, through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? Uh-huh. From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. That's how long it has been said to get ready because judgment day is coming. They have been saying since sin came into the world through Adam and Eve that we are in the last days. And we're still saying it now. We're in the last days. I'm going to stick with me. I'm almost done. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood and by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept 
for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing. Dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think, no. He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed but wants everyone to repent. That's why we ain't been destroyed yet because God is waiting patiently for you and me to repent and stop doing evil and give our whole life to him. That's why. But you got scoffers saying, yeah, well, what, well, what's up with the promise God made about coming? He ain't came yet. Man, I don't believe in that stuff. You ignorant. That's what your problem is. But you're going to listen to some other mess out there from the false teachers. If you knew your word, if you were studying your word, you would know that God loves what he created. In his likeness and image. And he wants us to repent. That's why he's waiting. He ain't slow to his promise. And you're not going to rush him. Because of your unbeliefs. He ain't already told you what, where you going with your unbelief. Huh. Keep unbelieving when he come. See where you end up. All right. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. God is a righteous judge. He don't get it wrong like they get it wrong in these courts. Got black men and white men and women and Mexicans and stuff like that on death row and they are innocent innocent it's been proven not everybody but a whole lot of people have been judged falsely judged falsely in your families you got liars in your family that's a generational curse it goes way way back to your great 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 grandmother and grandfather and you brought all the way down liars Generational course, and, they, and that stuff, that demon that's on them is attached to them. It just, it wants the whole family. Have you ever had a family? You got family, they just lie. They gossip and lie. Just gossip and lie. Mm, mm, mm. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Since all this is going to happen and you are a believer and you believe this word, it should show in your life. Stop the cussing. Stop. Being holy is being, you got to separate yourself from all this stuff that's going on in the world. That's what holiness is. You are separated and you are with God. You do what God says. You think about him, pleasing him only, not turning it up. Not the marijuana dispensary. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along, on that day he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames, but we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. 
And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. And this will result in their destruction. Peter's final words are this. You already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And glory to him both now and forever. Amen. This is the true worshiper. We just read out of 2 Peter, chapter 1 to chapter 3. Read it for yourself. If you have a King James Bible, that's fine. Push it to the side. Go to the Christian bookstore and get yourself a NLT or a NIV. I prefer the NLT, the New Living Translation. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Woo. Hallelujah.